Broadcasting live from the Wellness Wonderland, you're listening to the Wellness Wonderland Radio. I'm Katie, and each week I chat with the most inspirational people on the planet on how to stay inspired in all areas of life. As you listen, feel free to tweet at me, at Katie Dalebout, or use the hashtag Wellness Wonderland. I'd love to hear your aha moments. So grab your headphones and listen on the go, or cuddle up with a notebook as we dive in deep with authentic conversations right here in Wonderland. Hi guys, welcome back. I'm not going to talk too long before the episode because I know you already know by now the guest on this episode is none other than Gabby Bernstein. So you're probably super psyched to get to that, so I'll keep this short and sweet, but I'm so excited that Gabby has returned to the podcast, and the really cool thing about this conversation is that I polled you guys in the Facebook group, which you should totally join if you haven't. The link for that will be in the show notes. But anyways, I asked you guys, you know, if you were to have a conversation with Gabrielle Bernstein, what would you ask? And I asked your questions, and she answered them on the air. So get excited for that, and I asked, of course, some of my own. But it's a really great conversation. She shares some, you know, really present things in her life. And it's just, it's fantastic. So I'll get right to that in a minute. Just really quick, some notes at the top of the show. Um, Thank you to all of those who have left a review. And especially those of you who did it last week. Thank you so much. So helpful. So grateful. Thank you again. And for some of you guys donated, which is so nice. And if you find value in the show, it's just, it's so lovely to, to see that value and help me to be able to produce it and pro- get great guests like Gabby and, um, you know, compensate my amazing show producer, Amanda, um, who is helping me to be able to do this weekly again, which is amazing. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And one more thing that I want to chat with you guys about before we get to this episode is something that I attended a year ago, and it's Gabby's Spirit Junkie Masterclass. And you've probably heard me talk about it online a bit, Um, and a lot of my friends online as well, like past guest Jordan Bach, who is also coming back um, pretty soon. But anyways, Jordan and I were actually classmates at Masterclass. We um, sat by each other and had just a grand old time, but also learned a ton. And it was really, really, really helpful for me and the work that I do. And I remember I had asked Gabby um, years ago when, when I first met her, and I, and I asked her the same question that she had asked to her mentor, Marianne Williamson, years and years before, saying, you know, I want to share these messages with my generation. You know, how do I do that? How do I do that in my own way? And, you know, Gabby's answer to me really was this masterclass. And I realized that I wasn't the only one asking the question, as I thought I might have been. Um, There's a lot of people who want to be health coaches and yoga teachers and podcasters and writers and all of it. And the great news is that we need all of you. There are just so many people on the planet. There's so many people. Like, look at how many people follow Taylor Swift. Like, so many people on the planet, right? And they all need um, your message because we're all so different that, you know, we are all going to hear different things in different ways from different people. So anyways, if you have been listening to my podcast for a while or if this is your first time, welcome. Um, But if you have a slight inkling that you might want to share or teach something or write a book or do a podcast or anything, I highly suggest signing up for Gabby's Digital Spirit Junkie Masterclass, which is launched now. And use the link in my show notes. I'm a proud affiliate for her. So it really, really an awesome program. And if you sign up through me, I'm actually going to do a bonus of how to start your podcast and just really share my experience with podcasting with those of the people who sign up through me. And, you know, if you don't want to do a podcast, but you do want to sign up for um, Spirit Junkie Masterclass, I will do a call with you on whatever it is that, that you're into, like, you know, perhaps writing a book, something else I have experience in, um, yeah. So anyways, I, I owe a lot of my um, career trajectory to Gabby. She wrote the foreword to my book. She's a dear friend and mentor who I love very much. And I'm just really happy to promote her work because it's had such a profound impact on me. So if you're considering it or you have any questions, let me know. Shoot me an email. My email is katydalebout, my name, at gmail.com. It's in the show notes. It's on my website. You'll be able to find me. Um, But yeah, sign up through my link um, if you feel like it. If not, no worries. 
We don't really talk about it much in this episode, um, so you're going to love the episode either way. But I just thought I'd mention it at the top um, as like a ad of sorts. I don't know. Um, I guess. But yeah, not really because I'm just obsessed with it and would be sharing regardless. Um, so I hope you enjoy the episode. Enjoy, Gabby. I love you all a ton. If you have any questions for me at all on this episode, past episodes, or if you just want to say hi, shoot me an email, katydelbat at gmail, and I will talk to you guys soon. Enjoy, Gabby. Welcome back. Today's guest needs no introduction whatsoever. You all know her. You all love her. I love her. She's my mentor. She's my friend. She's the person that really opened me up to this new way of being. And above all, she taught me that all the world wants from me is to be real and to be myself. That's her quote that really changed everything for me. And today I'm doing this podcast and sharing this work and now we're going to be having a real conversation all because of of her and how awesome she is so round two authentic conversation with gabrielle bernstein on the wellness wonderland radio thank you so much for hanging out with me gabby of course i love hanging out with you i love you yay i know i know (laughs) a lot's happened since you were last on the podcast and you have another New York Times bestselling book. You've launched a school, which I am a graduate of, Spirit Junkie Masterclass, which I'm sure we'll get into today. You're working on another book. And so we just decided it was time for you to return to catch up with all of us. And like I, I told you this a little bit before the call, but I teased to everyone that you might be coming and I got a ton of questions. So I thought we would just kind of burn through some of those questions. You up for it? I love it. So fun. Yay. Okay, cool. So we'll see how many of these we can get through. So Maureen asks, how does a person whose profession centers around the surface, she has in parentheses, acting and performing, continue to be of service while practicing their craft? So how did, so she's an actress and a performer. And how does she continue to be of service while she's in the practice of that craft? Exactly. Okay. Well, as a performer, I think her primary goal is to entertain and uplift and elevate and give people a emotional experience. And it, it, I think the greatest thing about being a performer, you know, I, I was a, I have a degree in theater, so I had to spend a lot of time on stage, and in that way. And I think that the greatest thing, once again, is very similar to what you just said, is one of your favorite quotes of mine, which is to be authentic. Mm-hmm. And as a performer, if you can allow that authentic nature to come through you as you perform different characters in different roles and when people can see that authenticity that's when they feel very touched and they recognize themselves in the character and that's quite healing for people whether even if it's a difficult character to witness when they see that truth in someone it reminds them of their truth so as a as a performer and as a spiritual seeker she has a big job which is to always be leaning towards that authenticity that's in her and that she can express. So yeah, that's a cool question. Yeah, that's that's interesting that that connected to the quote that I started with because yeah. it's so true that I know that I always like, I'm so inspired obviously by you and, and self-help and spiritual stuff, but I'm also so inspired by like TV and comedy and whenever people are being real and people are being themselves like that inspires me almost just as much sometimes because it helps you feel less alone when you see an emotion that you're either feeling or you felt before it just helps us connect as humans so that was yeah. awesome yeah um all right Allie asks how do you spread your message in a way people will be more receptive to. I'm trying to just be, in all caps, the light, but when asked for advice, I want to offer a nice thought without completely being consumed by their problem. Ooh, that's a good one. So I feel like there's two questions in that. So the first one was, can you repeat the first part of that question? Yeah, the first part, she says, how do I spread your message so like the spirit junkie message in a way where people are more receptive to it. Okay. I think she means. And then the second part is that she's picking up on other people's stuff. Exactly. So I think okay. she's, yeah, there's two things there. Well, it sounds like 
you know, she she said it, she gave herself the answer in the question, which is to be it and not try to talk too much about it or push it on anybody or uh, overly emphasize what your spiritual beliefs are. It's the the overarching goal is to be the expression of the truth that you believe in, and so uh, her work is to just be in the grace of the happiness that she's cultivating and be in the peace of mind that she's connecting to and be the presence of calm in her chaotic relationships and be the loving voice when everyone's judging. And that's the best way that she can teach others, not necessarily by what she says, but how she be, how she is, how she yeah. is. In the world. How, you know, how do you be is what I ask people. <laughs> yeah, I love that. So what about the second part of that question, though, about picking up other people's stuff? Yeah, so I talk about this um, in my training, actually, the, about the psychic protection. And so I think the first part is to just realize how you pick up other people's stuff. And, 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 and when you're overtired or if you're, you know, just feeling overwhelmed and how, how, how there's certain areas and, and, and situations and circumstances that you can get into where you may be more vulnerable to other people's stuff. And to do whatever it takes to protect your energy and to protect your field and to protect your belief systems at all costs. And so uh, that may mean disengaging in certain conversations. That may mean uh, doing a meditation after you leave a party where you felt like you were just picking up other people's junk and asking, you know, doing a clearing kind of meditation. Um, some very practical tools I offer are just taking salt baths or I lie on a bio mat, which is a, it's a crystal mat. <laughs> there are certain things we can do to just recalibrate our energy but first and foremost to be conscious of the people and the relationships in her life that that put on that negative experience and 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 where she feels like she may be picking up uncomfortable stuff and so in those relationships she has to become aware of how she can protect her own energy and in some cases disengage and that may not always be comfortable and that may not always be um the most polite thing to do but it definitely does protect your energy Mm -hmm. Yeah, so good. And you do, you talk about that a lot in, um, you know, or even more than you just did in, in Masterclass. And it's helped me a lot because that was something that, that I struggle with. And I think all of us kind of new to this work struggle with it. And you've even spoken about that, Gabby, like kind of having boundaries with people. But those practical tools are so helpful. And I've, I've been doing this thing lately where like, even even like today when I was teaching yoga, this I, I wanted to like get home and everybody just wanted to like come up and like tell me stuff that happened to them, which yeah. was like really great, but like, you know, people that, that died and I, I wanted to like really be present with them, but I also needed to like have my energy to do the rest of the stuff I needed to do today. So I just pretended I was in this shell, like Humpty Dumpty, where like only two, like an egg and only two eyes, <laughs> like two like inlets for my eyes and like nothing could come in, but like I could send love out. And nice, it, Katie. Very yeah. Cool. Yeah. It was a good <laughs> So yeah, just that cloak that I learned from you, but I just like uh, put it into an egg shell. It's <laughs> so cute. That is so cute. Yeah. So this question from Carla seems a little bit similar, but I'm going to ask it anyways because I think there's a, a different spin, and I have a specific story in my I'm like I'm like, like putting quarters in the Gabby jukebox. Like if I have like specific stories, I think I might want to ask you to tell for this one if you don't. But um, this one, she says, I want to give advice to people around me and trying to be authentic doing that and trying to shine my light when I'm surrounded by friends and family and loved, loved ones who are not into it and don't understand it at all. So mm -hmm. she's trying to figure out how to handle that. She sounds similar to the other lady that we Very had. Very similar, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I think that, that if people are resisting her beliefs, there's a sense of her that may be resisting her beliefs. And mm. so we want to really look at how the people in our lives are just reflecting what we're believing on an internal screen. And if it, they, their disbelief may be consistent throughout your entire relationship with them, but your you being upset about their disbelief will change. And so the more you believe, the less their disbelief will affect you. And the more you believe, the more faith that they will experience as a result of your faith. So the real question is not how do I change them, but really how do you strengthen your faith? And in, experience, in the experience of strengthening your faith, you'll absolutely begin to establish greater relationships to these people in a way where you no longer feel judged by their disbelief. And most importantly, you'll be able to really strengthen their faith just by dwelling in your own. Mm, 
That's so good. And that's such an interesting answer because I was having a conversation with my friend, um, Simi, and she was saying, she said this like really awesome thing that like people sometimes are really loud when they're trying to convince themselves of something. And Mm. it's funny because I, I think that the more that I've gotten um, into my practice, actually the almost sometimes the quieter I get and the more I just be it and I'm sharing even more. And so I think that it goes back to, you know, what you're saying about just you are what you really embody. And um, the story I was going to ask you to tell here about this, if, if you would, um, is about when you first got started with Kundalini and how and you wanted to like go home and tell Zach about it, but really you just had to like be it. Can you tell that story a little bit? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it was like I was coming home every night of my yoga teacher training, like dipped in white and wearing turbans and like, you know, just, 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 you know, wanting to tell him every single, Zach is my husband, wanting to tell him every single detail of my experience and, and, and putting it on him in a sense and expecting him to get it and expecting him to just be right there with me with all of this like weird yoga and chanting and turbans and, and mantras in the background. And he just wasn't there. He was not into it at all. And I went to my teacher and I said, you know, what do I do? My husband doesn't like my yoga. I doesn't believe in it. And she said, she said, the second you get in the house, take off that turban and shut up and and it's such a good line because she really just was like this is not this is not his thing this is your thing and he's gonna learn he's gonna experience his own spiritual awakening through his own practices in his own life and maybe I'll influence him and maybe I won't and it doesn't matter it's gonna be his own experience and she was right and so leaving him alone actually gave him the freedom to establish a spiritual relationship of his own yeah I love that story so much. I tell it to, to people all the time. And, and that was really my path like like years ago when I was like really into health and like really from the physical standpoint and like food and superfoods and everything. Like all I wanted to do was like with my family, like, but you need to be eating this and that. And it was just like, ugh, like nobody wants that. that nobody wants – that's not a fun girl to be around. But, um, but then now as I've like – Grimook said I just like shut up now people are like sending me their green smoothie like hey look at this and look at that and um and it's just kind of funny because it's like being it is so much more powerful than your words yes and, exactly. and that's just such a great story love that okay so this is funny this is from Simi who I just mentioned small world she says how do you balance being in the moment with your desire to grow your business finances etc in the future I know being present is important but when you're really excited for the future that's a great question I'm excited for this answer so how do you balance being in the moment when you're excited for the future yeah yeah cool and you're uh, building and you're planning yeah well I think that we have to plan to to be in motion and to create and to vision for what's next but I think it's very important to set these intentions and then let them go and when we can wear our desires loosely we have a lot more freedom when one if they don't work out the way we expected we're not going to lose our cool uh, and and two we can create space for them to be even greater than what for the future outcomes to be even greater than what we imagined and so I think that it's important to, it's, it's fine to plan and it's fine to hold visions and it's fine to prepare, but then you have to also equally in the same breath, let it go and release it and just trust that, that you've got what you need. Mm, so good. So good. Okay. Laura asks, advice for building and sustaining a supportive tribe. I... For growing your supportive tribe, I feel happens naturally. I feel that as you grow your spiritual practice and as you spend time in communities with like-minded people, and it, and, and mainly the, it happens naturally when you revisit those communities regularly. So for instance, I spoke at a, a 12-step meeting this morning um, and I've been in uh, uh, recovery, sober recovery for 10 years. And I hadn't been to this meeting in uh, five years. And it was my home group originally, which means it was the meeting I went to every single day. Oh, that's so cool. And, 
I went back today and I and I randomly talked. I, I gave gave the, the qualification, spoke at the meeting, and all these people came up to me that I knew from five years ago, and they were family. They're my spiritual family. And meanwhile, they're like 60, 80, like like homeless, like all over the plant, over the map, you know. But these are my friends, and they were my spiritual running buddies early in my recovery, and they're 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 just they're still there, and they're still my family, and they're still my people. And the way that I created those relationships came because I went every single day to that meeting, 7.30 a.m. every single day for five years, right? Yeah. And so you create these relationships that become like family, even if you, you know, don't see the person for five years, because they're, they're folks that you have been around for so long, you know? And it's, and, and, and also because you're consistent in your practice and you consistently show up for that same, that same spiritual home, and in that home you establish your family. And so I think that if there's a, like the people that keep coming to your yoga class every Sunday, Katie, I'm sure that they've started to go get juice after yoga or they start to spend time with each other and they create their spiritual running buddies as a result of being in this consistent path. And so that I, I think is, is, a, is a powerful way to, to create those relationships. Yeah, that's that's how I've created them for sure. And <laughs> I love that you went back to your meeting, but I can't stop in my mind. I'm th- thinking like, I'm still, I'm still Jenny from, I'm still Gabby from the meeting. <laughs> like, you used to have a little, now I have a best-selling book. I'm never, you know. Like, <laughs> You're so fucking funny. <laughs> that's just what's like replaying in my mind. But, but yeah, that's such solid advice. And that's totally what's happened to me. And even in like your room and like coming to your events, like the first time I saw you speak was a couple of years ago and I knew no one and I had like no friends there. And then just recently I was with you at Kripalu and like, I had like a posse of people that I knew there because of being very public about fangirling. So I think that fangirling is like a really great way to build your spiritual tribe. And the internet is like your biggest ally in it too. Like, and be public. Like if you're really into Gabby's books, like be like me and like be her fangirl. I mean, you don't have to go that far, but like, (laughs) but I mean, I think it's really great to like share what you're into because whatever you're into, like there are other people who are into that too. And going to play, even if you have to like, it's harder to make friends, you know, as adults than it was in college or in high school, but like putting yourself out there, going to different events of stuff that you're into you'll you'll meet people there and um just like gabby said like that was her experience and then they'll always be your people because you connect so much Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) um all right so now that we sang some j-lo what is our next question we've got all right so this is a good one um what if you have so many passions interests and knowledge in a lot of different areas all applying to different people, age, sex, etc. And you feel called to help and teach and shine your light because you know that it's needed in every area. What do you think about that and finding a niche, et cetera, et cetera? Um, is this related to her career or just in life? It sounds like she's just having a lot of interest in life. Is that correct? Yeah, I think I'm... Yeah, I mean, I guess she doesn't specifically specify career, but I'm leaning towards kind of career here. Um, yes, yeah, so, I mean, just in general, if you have lots of different passions, interests, bring your light everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> but if trying to just clarify how you express these messages, and, and maybe this is not exactly answering her question, but maybe just in general, if you're just, you know, wanting to spread your messages and spread your truth in all these different arenas, my recommendation is to do what you love. So I think, Katie, you're a fantastic example. Like you love just talking about what was up for you and talking about the things that you were learning and your path and what was new to you. And so you started sharing about it on a podcast. For me, I love doing video. I loved just being in front of the camera and just speaking extemporaneously about topics I believe in. And so I've been doing video for 10 years. So I think the different mediums that we have available to us are plentiful and we can just really lean towards the ones that really light us up and bring out our most authentic truth in in fun and innovative ways so i think the answer is to just do to to share these messages in a way that's really genuine to you and really fun for you yeah yeah and there's so many platforms growing like by the day like there's periscope Mm -hmm. today who knows what there'll probably be another one in a Mm -hmm. month that we'll love so 
Um, all right, this, this question is interesting, kind of a different switching gears. If you're in physical pain and have been following your advice for a while and your ability every day to surrender to the best of your ability but are not out of the physical pain yet, what would you do? What would you say to yourself? So I think that underneath physical pain is unfelt rage and anger and fear. And so I would, rather than try to put an affirmation on top of the pain, I would try to go deep into what rage, anger, and fear is lingering underneath and what needs to be spoken and what needs to be expressed and what needs to be worked through in therapy or with a practice like may cause miracles or what can you, where can you bring that rage, anger, and fear? And I guarantee you, whoever that question, whoever asked that question is either saying, oh yeah, she's right. I've got some mm -hmm. stuff that I look at because when we have physical pain, it's, it's the manifestation of unfelt rage, anger, and fear. Mm, so good. I'm so glad that we answered that for that person. Okay. Last listener question. Then we have questions for me. So Jesse asks, any tips and resources on public speaking? Gabby absolutely kills it up there. I agree. So I have a, first of all, I'm obsessed with public speaking. It's my greatest passion. It's my, it's my art and I am, and I respect it deeply and I have such joy in fine tuning the practice of being a speaker. I believe that it's very important to know where you're going when you're giving a talk. So having a very clear outline of what it is that you're going to share. And then the more confident you are with your outline and the more ingrained the outline is in your being, the more free you can be on stage. Mm -hmm. So I used to think for a while, oh, I don't need to prepare. And I remember seeing my teacher Wayne Dyer on the stage once and he was like, yeah, I just get up here and I talk. and. And that worked for Wayne, and, and and that could work for me too. But I found that, and, and that, 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 act, that that just get up on stage and talk thing is, is usually okay when you're, um, you know, you have a four hour presentation <laughs> and you can just be in conversation with people. But when you're giving a talk that's 20 minutes, an hour, 45 minutes, you have to get to the point. Yeah, and yeah. so I, I really um, was blessed to just go deeper in the process of fine tuning my storytelling and my outline and really knowing exactly where I was going and exactly what beats I wanted to hit. And when I had those beats down, then I could get on the stage and I could be free. And for me, um, my primary intention when I get onto the stage is to be an untethered force of light. And the only way that I can be untethered is if I have the bones that are strong underneath everything. And those bones are the outline. And that's actually how I write too. I write as an untethered force of light. When I, but the only way I can actually get a book done is if I have a strong outline. So you get a really, really strong outline, a clear vision of where you're going. You know all your beats, and then you get on the stage and you go and you let loose, and anything's possible. Yeah, that is so cool to to hear. And when we were at Kripalu, like you know how musicians throw out their guitar picks to the audience, Gabby gave me her biggest fan her notes, her outline for her <laughs> talk, and it was so cool because I don't even know if you remember this, Gab, but like you had written and like real, you obviously were like th in the talk, and you must have thought of this like really amazing line, and you just like jotted it down on the outline, and it was like one of the most profound things that you said in the talk, and that just came through you like mid talk, but you still it? had the. I don't know. I have them right here. Send it to me. <laughs> it was so good. I'm literally gonna send it to you. Actually, I have it like in my journal. I'll find it while we're talking. But um, okay. but that was a really. Oh, actually, it's right here. When you see with spiritual sight what you see wait no i can't read it what you see with it was just so good i wrote it down in my notes but it was like when you see with spiritual sight what you see changes basically was like the yeah. gist of it and yeah. that was like such an aha moment in the talk and it was clear that that like just came through you like in, yeah. during the talk so yeah. you had the outline but you still allowed spirit to like speak through you which that's is the way goal. cool yeah that's yeah. the goal yeah so that was like a perfect real life example of i had that i had of it really um, <laughs> yeah, so good. Um, okay, good. This is like a nice transition to, to something else I, I wanted to talk to you about because those public speaking tips you shared were great. And you go, again, more in depth with that in Spirit Junkie Masterclass. And it was this amazing experience that as we're talking right now, a year ago, I was I was with you going through it, which is way cool. And I heard you say about um, 
the digital version that is launching now that's so amazing and so cool and we'll talk about that more in a second too but I heard you say that this is the best usage of you so mm-hmm. why is that and like what do you mean by that yeah I mean I really feel that I feel that this being so I've been doing this training now I've done two live level one trainings and then I'm going on to my second level two training and and with, this is all within less than a year. Well, within a year because it was just came up on a year, right? Mm-hmm. And so literally like this weekend. It's unreal. I and know. We've got like, you know, almost coming up on a thousand alumni. And like, it's just mind blowing. And so, and so I had to turn it into a digital training and I had to make it available to people around the world because this is the best use of me. Uh, I feel very, very, very called, Katie, to empower teachers and to empower people just like you to step out and go and be and do all that you're here doing and to be more more mindful be more gentle be more loving towards themselves and then bring it out in a massive way and I do not identify as a teacher who stands alone I I see that the only way to get this work done is to it, it has to be many and so uh, I'm thrilled that this is now a trend. This thing that I was doing that was quite strange and different and underground is now this big trend. And it is so big and it is so massive and it is so timely. And in order to really reorganize the energy of the times that we're in, we need more light workers. So I feel extraordinarily called to impact and inspire folks to really own the confidence to step out and do the great work that they've been dreaming of doing. And The reason that this training is the best use of me is because I'm truly fulfilling my mission and my function, which is to spread the light, but not by myself, but but with 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 an army, with a posse. And so being on that stage and just telling people here's where I was and this is what I've done to to create the 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 career and the life and the fun and the and the joy and the service that I've been able to bring to the world is such a thrill to be able to tell those stories and to be able to give the tools that I've been using. And it, it when I get when I get up for the masterclass trainings, it's the most elevated I ever am on stage. Yeah, I don't know, yeah. maybe part of it is being with my choir, right? There's no one in that room that's in doubt. Um, part of it is is just just being so committed to teaching others to serve and I think the other part of it is just the joy of being a teacher just the genuine freaking joy of being a teacher is so cool it's just so cool oh you could just feel it like I don't even hear it when you're talking I can just feel it like it's just because I was there and I've I've done the I understand so much how passionate you are about this just just from your work but then also like you're so passionate about waking up as many people as possible and then you understand that like you need other people to help you do that and it's just it's such a beautiful thing because I I really truly felt like and maybe this is like narcissistic or whatever but like I thought that when you were making this program I was like oh this was made for me like this is so made for me this is so perfect and so amazing and it was 1000% but the interesting thing was so was all of my amazing like brothers and sisters there and a lot of people who have been on the podcast like Jordan and a lot of my friends that I met there um, all felt the exact same way because you really do when you see someone it, and it's really cool to like go behind the scenes and you really like open up the kimono and tell us everything about your career and your everything that you've built and what's so engaging to me and what's so wonderful is that like you said this message there's just so many freaking people on this planet and so many people who have no clue um I I just you know in my little world I feel like everybody knows Gabby Bernstein and everybody knows this work but the truth is that there's still a lot of people who need work and might come to it through you know me or someone else or you listening and we need all of those people and for a long time like I didn't really understand that but after masterclass I really did and we're all you know sharing this message in our own authentic way in our own own natural bodies and it's going to look different to everybody but we're sharing the same message and you know I always say it's like just like Mexican food some people like tacos some people like burritos some people like nachos but at the end of the day it's all like beans and corn you know so (laughs) so it's really like we need all these different formats to get those nutrients you know into us and Gabby is like 
you know, teaching people to be tacos and stuff. <laughs> now I want Mexican food. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, so anyways, yeah, it's just, it's so exciting. And I'm just so happy that it exists, basically. So um, one question that I have around masterclass, kind of, um, and just an interesting topic that we discuss a lot on the show and, and in my work and a lot of people who listen to the show is around body image and really embracing their natural bodies. And something interesting is that a lot of times a block for doing this work and just doing, you know, work in general and being yourself, a lot of times um, your body image or fear of being yourself can kind of come in and you think that you need to look a certain way to be loved, respected, admired, and successful in, you know, your career or sharing this message and starting your career. So could you talk a little bit about um, authenticity and just embracing exactly who you are as you are? Absolutely. I think that we have to just first and foremost accept that whatever it is that we're, we're going through and we're learning is what we're here to teach. And so if you are struggling with your body image, then that's going to be a great opportunity for you to get into the practice of healing your perceptions of your body so that you can teach other people how to do the same. And so I think that that, that that's a big piece is just first embracing this as a spiritual assignment so that you can share it with others. And then the other piece I think that's very valuable is to just recognize your body as a vessel through which you express love and light. And when I got that, I, I began to really treat my body differently. And I started to see that my body not just as this like thing I was lugging around and or just, you know, so, you know, just something that could wear fun clothes or whatever. I started to see my body as the messenger and the vehicle through which I am expressing the, the work that I am teaching and the messages that I'm here to bring forth. And so it made me really take my body a lot more seriously in terms of my health and my well-being and and just what I put into my body and 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 what I and 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 the the and, and really my energy levels and how I can uh, maintain and sustain the the health and well being that I want to bring out and so I think that 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 perception of your body seeing yourself as a messenger seeing yourself as someone who has great work to bring forth helps you see your physical body in a different way and helps you respect your body in a different way uh, but if you are struggling with your body image issues really first accept that this is a great spiritual assignment for you to work on so that you can give other people the, the lessons and the messages on how they can do the same. Yeah, yeah, I think that that's, it's been my biggest spine in my back. I think that's the, the saying, but it's been the thing that's, um, or sword in my spine, whatever. Um, it's been the thing that's really I've struggled with and so it became so clear to me that it was the thing that I didn't really want to talk about and I didn't really want to teach about but then as soon as I did as soon as I like came out of the closet with that um, I realized that I so wasn't alone and there were so many other people and you know like like you always say Gab like um, creating a spiritual connection of your own understanding that's really what I have found I want to help people do to tackle you know this this one particular issue that you know is an issue that so many women and increasingly people um, have to deal with so I think it's really awesome that that you shared that and especially in um, Make Cause Miracles the the body week of that was really really helpful for me and so anyone who hasn't read that book go get that book and that chapter in particular is one to kind of redo if this is a if this is a struggle for you yeah, that's a big chapter for people. Yeah. Um, all right. So going back to um, your career a little bit, and this might kind of connect with what we were talking about before, I would love to know your proudest career moment and maybe when you knew that, like, all right, this this is what I'm meant to do and things are going well. My proudest career moment was yeah. the, when I stepped on stage for the first master class. It was, like, the, the moment. It makes me cry. <laughs> oh my god, me too. <laughs> it makes me cry. Yeah, because I just stood there and I was like, "Yeah, this is this is it. This is what I'm supposed to be doing." Oh man, can I just tell you a story about that moment? Because <laughs> I remember it like it was yesterday, and it was exactly a year ago. You were wearing this like fabulous white outfit. I was in the very front row, seat number one eleven. 
and you come on stage and you're like rocking to this like rocking music and you lock in right at me and you point and you smile and like I knew you were looking right at me and it just like and then I start crying and it was just like so good and like I said I've seen you speak a million and a half times like um, you know watching all of your lectures and like I listened to them on repeat and that one was completely different. Not that the other ones have been bad or, you know, they're still amazing, but like, I will never forget how you started that talk. You walk on stage and you're like, it's 2005. I'm, and the, you know, Lower East Side, and you're like, and I was skating uptown and down, and, you know, people should just watch the talk and get the masterclass and they can like hear it. But I will never forget that moment. Like, I had full body chills because you started with a story and you like told the story and I could see all of it. And like, I felt like I was, you know, with you with that because I had been kind of following your, your career since the beginning and then I got to actually hear you talk about what I had been following in your words and it was it was just really, really cool. That's <laughs> where that talk is like worth the the rest of the master class, which is like so amazing and helpful. But like that talk just alone and that moment. That actually like that five minute period is like worth it all because it was just so powerful and amazing. <laughs> You're so cute. I love it. That was my favorite moment, too. Oh, it was so good. So good. And we danced, and it was just amazing. Um, <laughs> oh, just such high energy. So with this um, digital version, I am blown away by, like, how cool it is and, like, the value that people get in it. Because I will say that you, you know, I did it in one weekend, but I really had to like go back through. And the nice thing about this is that like you can do this at your own pace. So I'd love if you could kind of like talk a little bit about the differences between the um, the online program and what what people really are getting with that. And then um, this is kind of a two-parter, but you mentioned this really cool bonus that people get when they sign up, which is something that Zach, who I love, your husband, mm -hmm. um, he helped create which is like really cool stuff that we all need and like I'll speak for myself I had no clue what to do with when I you know got started with this about contracts and, and other stuff that yeah. we all really need info on so can you talk about all of that yeah, yeah. <laughs> that um, well first and foremost I um, I feel like the digital course you get even more content than you get in the in the live yeah. weekend because it's actually videos from so it's videos that have been from the live weekends from both the 2014 and the 2015 live weekends, and they're edited into short module into eight modules. And so it's actually a better learning experience than if you're in the live. And the live events it's its own thing, and I would never take it away from anybody. But from a learning experience, you're you're really having this very guided journey and I've I personally watched every single minute of those videos and and worked with the editor to edit them to be perfect modules so that they would just be at the exact beat that you needed to the next beat that you needed and so there's worksheets that apply that, that align with it with each video and and the interesting thing that's the, the you know the big bonus is that they get these they get videos from both events so you're not just seeing 2014 you're seeing 14, 15. And then the groovy thing is, is if you're in the modules and you're in the platform, you're going to get new videos all the time added in because as I continue to lead these, these programs, I'm going to bring in new speakers. I'm going to add new material. Oh my gosh. So material is going to continuously be building upon, so it's going to become bigger and bigger and beefier and beefier. So that it's is kind so of, cool. You get in now and then you just keep growing with the content, which is just kind of the most epic part about so it. So it's like a membership basically. Well, I mean, every year that I do a new live event, uh, there'll be new content and there'll be new speakers yeah. and those are going to be added in and it's just going to get, just going to get hipper and hipper. And, um, so that's happening. And then, yeah, you know, we're, we're, we're doing this digital launch right now and it's, it's out and it's available until October 9th and, and. And we're also giving this beautiful bonus right now, which is this, this spirit junkie business basics, which my husband and I created. And my husband now works with me and he's, he's been he's so cool. Yeah. He's super cool. And he, and he's a lawyer and a banker and has a trim and, and also an artist and a musician and a fashionista, but he's, he's extremely talented as it, as it relates to small, you know, running a small business. Cause he's been helping me run mine for a long time now. And now it does that full time. And, um, so we've given you this, this, 
several modules on bookkeeping, legal. Zach wrote an entire module on how to negotiate, which is just tremendous. So uh, we gave you three contracts, and those three contracts are you know, at least $500 each. So it's like $1,500 value of contracts. So your coaching contract, your speaking contract, endorsement contract, um, independent contractor agreement. It's, it's, it's crazy. So um, we interview my CPAs and my bookkeeper and my lawyer, and we just have, you know, just really, really rich content in there. And it's it's just, it's awesome. So that's, that's a really beautiful bonus. And that's like a $400 bonus or whatever we, we throw in right now. And then there's two live calls with me. So while you're going through the training, you're going to get this opportunity to just really be with me and and ask me questions directly and be heard and have your voice heard. But then the neat thing is also people can ask questions throughout the training in the modules, and then I'm I'm constantly checking it daily to see if there's new questions that have come into the portal, and I answer them live. So there's constantly an opportunity to ask me questions directly, and I'm always there answering them in the in the comments of the of each module. So. It's a very interactive experience, but I think it's just, I, I honestly think it's the best work I've ever done. I think it's the most incredible training on the planet. And then the most, the coolest thing, Katie, is that my primary mission for this training was that it would give people the confidence to step out and do what they've been talking about doing forever. And the number one response we get when we, whenever we do surveys or whenever people give us testimonials is that this training is the training that kick, that pushed them over the edge to do exactly what they've been talking about doing forever. So it's, it's a, it's number one. It gives you the confidence to really just go for it. And then the skills and the practices to, to implement. Mm, so good. And as your number one fangirl, I will say that it is my favorite thing that that you've created, which is like really hard for me to say because I've done everything uh-huh. and it's it's just so cool and you learn so much about yourself, I think going through the process because I think it's such a um you one of the the things that we go through in, in the modules is is really getting clear about your story and what you're here to teach and um doing this course for me really helped me find the clarity on, you know, what I'm here to do. And it's always evolving and changing. And I'm, you know, still in this evolution. We, we always are, but it really helps you cement that and feel like you can do it. Like, I didn't really feel like I, I could do it until I had, you know, these, these tools and, and this stuff. And like that bonus with Zach stuff is like, oh my God, so cool. And it's not available anywhere else right now, correct? It's only available um, when people sign up for this. So it's just, yeah. So it, it, at the moment it's only available that way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I'm just psyched about this and yeah. So we will, um, wrap up with some quick fire questions right now, which I'm so excited about. But if anyone has any questions, I talked to you guys before the episode about this and to get some really cool swag from me, um, just sign up in the link in the show notes and as well as just, you know, email me personally if you have any questions and I will help you out. But this is just so exciting and I'm just so glad this is available to so many more people now because I get questions about it like every day. So thank you so much for telling us about it, Gab. Mm-hmm. All right. So ready for some fun questions? Yeah. All right. Favorite season? Fall. Um, favorite fall, I thought you may say that, favorite fall fashion tip and any style tips in general because you're like my fashion guru as well as my spiritual guru. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I have a fashion tip for fall, but I love – Fall because I can wear like leather jackets. And that's like the only jacket I need. <laughs> I love leather jackets. <laughs> like layering with like your leather like jacket. Okay. Yeah, and I just like that I can wear lighter jackets. Yeah, I have like a lot of jackets. <laughs> jackets are the best because I feel like you can just like throw it over. There's the outfit. Yeah, yeah, they make it. It's like the best accessory. Yeah. Um, what about any like style tips in general? Wear what makes you feel good and brings you joy. I, I'm doing that book, the, um, the Marie Kono book. Yeah. Yeah. Marie and Kondo. it's like changing my life. And so just really wear what brings you joy. Yeah. And, um, and I've, I've heard you say this before too, like dress authentic to you. And I think that goes back to like the quote I said at the top of the call, which is really like everything, you know, it really kind of sums up everything, which is just like dress authentically, speak authentically, do you know, be you do you basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, 
All right, what's your morning routines looking like now? And um, it, is it the same every day or is it fluid and changes with the seasons? Well, it's changing right now. So I'm committed to meditating much longer in the morning. Normally I do like a tw- uh, 20 minutes in the morning at some point. And now I'm trying to sit right when I wake up in the morning, like just get up in bed and sit and maybe even sit longer just because I'm really trying to start my day with a lot of peace. And so not even getting up to you know get a drink or anything, just go right into my meditation. And then whatever else happens for the rest of the day doesn't really matter. Cool. What yeah. about in the in the evenings? What are kind of your evening uh, tips to relax? Just a tip, do not watch Homeland before bed. <laughs> um, I just genuinely try to try to read before I go to sleep or journal, but I like to read mainly. And um, mainly because I, I just I just but I, I will only really be reading like spiritual self-help books before bed. And that makes me feel great helps me fall asleep and it just just puts me into a mindset that's peaceful so that I can get get to a lovely restful night. Mm, that's so good. I like doing that too or listening to books or listening to to podcasts. Mm-hmm. Um, what is the best dream that you had that you can remember? What a great question, Katie. Best dream. I don't think I can rem- um it could be a daydream. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've had, I've had, like, no, I don't, I don't know if I can remember, but this is a good question. I'm gonna get back to you. Okay, yeah, get back to me. Well, I know one thing. <laughs> this is creepy, but I know one thing that you've said that you like would. This is maybe more of a visualization, but like you would visualize your wedding, and then when your wedding happened, it was like so similar to what you visualized yeah. and felt. Yeah, totally. And I thought that was really cool. Um, Okay, what is the hardest time you've ever laughed? The hardest time I've ever when I, the hardest I've ever laughed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind oh. of phrase weird, but yeah. Um I was laughing really hard recently and I can't remember why. Um You know, again, I don't know. I mean, I've got I've had some good laughs, but I can't remember exactly. I mean, I, I really laugh at my mom a lot. She's <laughs> Hysterical. Your mom, uh, past podcast guest. Oh yeah, she is a previous <laughs> guest. <laughs> oh my god, that's so good. Um, I'm trying. I feel like I had a really good belly laugh recently, but I can't remember why. So I, I'm not answering these questions as well as no, I know. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Text me though when you think of it, because I want to okay. know and laugh with you. Okay. Um, good. All right. What advice would you give to your 25 year old self? AKA me. <laughs> um, I would tell myself like, J- just chill. It is going to be so awesome. Relax. <laughs> oh, that's like a breath of fresh air. Yeah. Yeah. It's all good. Um, what's your favorite quote? I have a few. Um, you know, I quote Joan of Arc a lot, which is, I am not afraid I was born to do this. And um Then another one that I know that you love, I say, those who are certain of the outcome can afford to wait and wait without anxiety. And that's uh, Course in Miracles quote. Mm -hmm. That one's so good. So good. Um, What's your – New York City is is your city. And um, I've been thinking, like, about New York a lot this this weekend. And because I was there a year ago and, you know, it's just such a great city. So what's your favorite thing about living in New York and maybe a tip for living in New York? Um. My favorite thing about living in New York is that there's just everything on every corner. I mean, anything you need is just right there, which I really, really appreciate because I live in the country now part time. And that was probably the main thing I miss when I'm in the country is I'm like, we can't order in. You know, I can't go to Delhi. <laughs> Although there is a, a general store down the street from my house um, in, the, in, the, in the country. But, um, but, the biggest piece of advice about living in New York City is just like really be aware of how chaotic the energy is here. And I came back from living in the country all summer and I came back yesterday and I was walking around and I went to brunch and I was like, just, I got back to my apartment and I was like, whoa, like I can't handle that. <laughs> I was just really rocked. And I think it's just really, really mindful of how chaotic the energy is and just protect your energy and go slow. Yeah. Probably for all big cities too. Good thing mm-hmm. to do. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, so this is a, a question from Tim Ferriss that, that I'm stealing, but I 
find it's very interesting. So in the last six to 12 months, what pur purchase of $100 or less has had the most impact on your life? Cool question. Um, it's okay if you can't think of anything. I can probably think of something. Hold on. Um, $100 or less has had an impact on my life. Um, cool question, right? Yeah. It's very. Really interesting. Um, a few. A salt lamp that I have on my desk. Which oh, I, I have one too. I'm looking at it as we speak. Yeah, super, super nice to have. Um, this is going to sound so lame. A salad spinner. I never had a salad spinner. Oh, like, cool. I make a lot of salads and I always just like, I hate wet lettuce so much. And so I was just constantly like, like drying lettuce with paper towels. And I was like, why don't we have a salad spinner? And that's like, oh yeah, good idea. So the salad spinner, that's my answer. Well, that's a good one. That's a great one. Anything else? Um... Let's see. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm sure there's more. There's always. Well, if you think of them, you got you got to text me about the dream and the laugh. So <laughs> just yeah, toss it, it in the mix. <laughs> probably. Oh, you know. Um. Uh. Probably like. So I love supplements. So, um, a new one that I recently started taking was milk thistle. Maybe that's another one. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. All right. So this is this is a good one. So you're dropped on a deserted island and you can only bring the following. Two people, one book, one TV show to binge watch, one and one food to eat. Oh my God. <laughs> well, obviously I bring Zach. Who's the other person? I guess I'd bring my mom, yeah. And the TV show to binge watch scandal and what was the other thing uh book oh i bring a course of miracles that never gets old and then what else a food a that you wouldn't get sick at pizza obviously duh. <laughs> amazing so good all right so you do so much stuff in your life you're doing wearing lots of hats and um you know you're this big presence for so many people. So what do you do to stay organized and also to, to stay relaxed so you can show up fully for your job in the world? Organized, I uh, have a good assistant team that's helping me a lot that I really, Allison and Deb who are on my team are some of the best people that I've ever attracted into my life and I just love them deeply. God bless, them. God bless them so much. Um, yeah, I'm just learning how to delegate for the first time in 10 years, so it's a big deal for me. And then what was the other question? How do I say organize and relax? Yeah. Um, I mean, for me, the best relaxation is sleep, meditation, um, and just downtime because I, 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 I push hard, I pump hard and it's just my personality. And I just, as much as I'd love to tell you that I was like this perfectly Zen, you know, Deepak Chopra type person. I, and I, and I just like, I look at Deepak, I'm like, I want that. I want to be like that. And I know that he is that way because of his meditation practice. So I have to stay committed to my meditation practice, my sleep and, and just genuine downtime because I, I push hard, man. I go big. So I, I gotta pull back sometimes. I think it's good that you share that you're you're not that way all the time because, like we've been saying, the realness is is I why I think we love you and can relate to you. Like perfectly balanced. I have I work really hard to stay in balance because, you know, I'm I'm an addict through and through. Like I go big and hard, and I need to really be mindful of that to maintain and sustain my energy levels and. So it's being conscious of not too much caffeine and conscious of meditating and conscious of sleeping and resting and stopping. And I'm going to hang up with you. I'm going to go and I'm going to meditate for a half hour before I have to go to my Rosh Hashanah dinner. So yeah, that's the story. <laughs> so good. What's the favorite place you've ever traveled to? Um, my favorite place I've ever traveled to. Uh, Brazil, visiting John of God. Mm, cool. I was just listening to, to Wayne Dyer and um, – Super Soul Sunday talking about John of God again today. And I was just like, oh, I really want to go someday. You will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So cool. Um, favorite meal you've eaten in the last week? Um, that's a good one. I had 
I made a delicious salmon cakes the other day, which oh, I saw that on Instagram in my entire life. Yeah, it was pretty ridiculous. Yeah, there was like quinoa involved, I think. Yeah, it was ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Makes- very mm-hmm. cool. Um, what is your favorite on the go spirit junkie snack? On the go almonds. Mm, so good. What's your favorite beauty ritual lately? Mm, dry brushing. It's not so beauty, but it's like really yeah. good. For my, it's good for my circulation. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. skin. skin. Mm-hmm. Um, how are you challenging yourself lately? Um, I'm challenging myself to meditate longer. Cool. What is your, I think you mentioned this actually, maybe the Marie Kondo book, but what is the book that you're into recently? Yeah, that, that, that Marie, she's good. Magical Art of Tidying Up, yeah. Yes. Like the body uh, book. I'm reading the Body Ecology Diet. I'm really passionate about the Candida Diet, and her book talks about that a lot. Very cool. Um, and what about journaling? I know that, well, you know that I'm really into journaling, and you have had a journaling practice um, in the past, but what does, you know, moving through your feelings through writing, what does that do for you and, and does that still have a role in your life today? Absolutely, yeah. Um I journaled a lot more when I was single and lived alone. And I didn't go to bed in the same bed with somebody. But um it was kind of like a companion for me. Mm-hmm. Um but I write I'm always writing a book at some point in time. So I feel like I'm in a daily journal because of my, my because I'm writing books. Yeah. And, and I say this in, in my book about journaling, but I feel like I don't know really what I'm thinking or how I'm feeling unless I'm processing it through writing. And for you, right, whether it's writing a book or writing in your journal, it's something that, that you do too, which is way cool. And you wrote about it in the foreword of my book, which people can read soon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so what is your favorite song recently that you like keep listening to on repeat or like can't get out of your head? There's a few. Um, I made such a good mix. I'm going to have to give you the link to share with your people. I made the best mix for my Miracles in Montauk event. So I've kind of just, rather than one specific song, it's that mix that I've been replaying. So I'll give you the link on my Spotify. Yay. Okay, cool. There's Miracles in Montauk link on my Spotify. Yeah, I've got it. I listen. I follow you. Ridiculously good. I'm excited. I'm going to go, like, dance to that after this. Mm Mm-hmm. Um... What what about a movie that you've watched recently? Or in the last, like, year or so? I haven't had internet in my house the whole summer, so I haven't been watching any streaming movies. I've just been reading. So <laughs> um, a movie that I've watched in the last year that I really liked. Um, well, I mean, my favorite movie that I recently rewatched was 16 Candles. <laughs> That's what you said last time. <laughs> it's my favorite movie. You love one. that movie so much. I, I, I hate I to tell you this, to... but I don't think I've seen it, and I need to go watch it now because Wait, what's wrong with you? I don't know what's wrong with me, but I'm gonna watch it like tonight or something. Kitty, who are you? Go I don't know. It. I don't know what my problem is. I thought I said it twice on your own. I house. know. I don't know what's wrong with me. I I'm... actually watched it recently, and I was like, hey, "This is so good." <laughs> okay, I'm on it, and I will report back my thoughts, and then I'm sure I'll like it. Um, all right. So, final question, and again, you answered this the last time you were here, but I want to see, you know. If your if your answer has changed, so as you know, the name of this podcast and my blog is the Wellness Wonderland. So when I offer that term to you, Gabby, to live in a wellness wonderland, what does that mean to you? To be in conscious contact with my inner guidance system, to be continuously committed to bettering my well being, and to be mindful of what I take in and what I put out. So good. Thank you so much for that answer and hanging out for so long and hanging out with me and answering all these fun questions and just sharing your truth and being so real and so authentic. I, I always say when, when people ask me like about you or mention you, I'm just like, she's so real and so awesome in life and in her books and in her talks. And I'm just so fortunate to know you. So just wanted to say that publicly for everyone else to hear. And I'm just so glad to have you in my life and have your work as a major part of my life. I just love you so much. I love you so much. I'm so proud of you, honey. So cool. Yay. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everyone. Bye, everybody. 
Thanks for listening. You made it all the way to the end. I'll be back next week, but until then, let's stay inspired and keep this conversation going. So tweet at me at Katie Jailbow and our guest with your aha moments from this conversation. And like the Wellness Wonderland on Facebook so we can all hang out there and discuss how inspired we are and how we'll apply it in our daily lives. And never miss another episode or post from me by signing up for email updates on thewellnesswonderland.com. See you back in Wonderland.